After a man discovers a time-traveling machine, he slowly unfolds his part, but his life is put at risk as the government hunts him down. In Warsaw, year 2030, three agents interrogate a woman named Goria. Agent Jan Tragos informs her that they've wiped her memories and that she will be assimilated into society to start a new life. Moreover, he promises that the government won't bother her anymore. Goria isn't satisfied with his assurance since she wants to know her lover's whereabouts. Sadly, the agents refuse to answer. Earlier that that year, a jaded man has arrived in Warsaw by boat. His boat driver hands him a mysterious card that he can use to redeem his new residence. Before he leaves, the driver tells him to relax as his memory will return eventually. The man asks the driver if he knows his name, and he replies that it's Adam. Shortly after, Adam heads to a realtor's office where he uses his card to redeem his apartment. Kowalski Rajimir, the realtor, assists him in moving inside a rundown apartment. One of the features of the future is a cashless transaction, and Rajimir instructs Adam to use his hand to purchase a foam mattress. A while later, Adam tries to sleep but encounters a flash of his past. In this memory, a man forcibly inserts a chip into his hand, informing him that it would contain his new identity and monetary possessions. The following day, Adam begins his job as a janitor, and his unemotional co-worker, Bernard, shows him the ropes. He warns Adam that he shouldn't clean the room behind him as the superiors work there. Then, Bernard tours him inside an office where Adam is assigned to clean. He informs him that the room has frequent power interruptions, so he advises him to stand still and wait for it to return. He adds that he's free to take an extra break if the power is yet to return. Once he finishes explaining the fundamentals of their job, Bernard wishes him a good first day. During his shift, Adam instantly feels attracted to her female superior, who turns out to be Goria. He stares intently at her, but she refuses to reciprocate. Therefore, Adam simply returns to his tasks. Suddenly, Goria stops him and asks Adam to answer a riddle describing human beings. Since Adam takes time to respond, Goria leaves. Bernard creeps up from behind him and warns him about Goria. According to him, she's crazy and will give him misfortune. Following their interaction, Adam heads to the company's canteen and locates Goria. He tries to give her the answer to the riddle, but she rejects it, reasoning that it's too late. To appear nonchalant to her colleagues, Goria tells him they'll never be friends. Contrary to Bernard's warning, Goria informs him that Bernard can be dangerous and that he lives in the broom closet. Abruptly, she stands up and invites him to have a private conversation outside the cafeteria. Goria tells Adam he should ask her out immediately, and he complies. When one of her colleagues passes by, Goria pretends to make fun of Adam's invitation. The next day at work, Adam and Bernard hang out in a virtual world, where the pair talk about how Adam has reached Warsaw. Adam reveals that he used a boat, believing it was safe against the attacks. However, Bernard thinks the subway is safer as their totalitarian government refuses to destroy it since it's expensive. Out of nowhere, Adam asks him if he truly lives inside a broom closet, and Bernard invites him to accompany him. Upon arriving at the closet, Bernard proudly shows him the room key explaining that hackers won't be able to steal his password. Inside the cramped closet, Bernard presses a button, opening a secret door. Adam curiously examines the interior, whereas Bernard recounts how he acquired his residence. Back when he ran out of money, the company gave him the room, especially since he's a tenured employee. Adam comments that the company is kind for doing such an act. In curiosity, Adam asks Bernard if he misses having a window. Bernard admits he's fine with how his room is designed, especially since no one's watching him. This time, Bernard asks Adam where he comes from, but he shakes his head as he wonders the same. Later in the evening, Goria confronts Adam for forgetting to clean her desk as a pretext for conversing with him. In truth, Goria simply expresses her appreciation for the flower Adam has left on her desk. Still, she tries to reject Adam, but the man declares she'll be chasing him someday. Goria retorts she'll only chase him if her scarf gets stuck in his car. Speaking of the car, Goria asks him if he owns one, but he denies it. Due to his response, Goria informs him that his answer isn't helping him win her interest. Suddenly, a power interruption occurs, and Adam takes the opportunity to kiss Goria. Once it returns, the illuminated room reveals Bernard's presence, causing Goria to slap Adam. Back in his apartment, Adam tries to open the ceiling cabinet. While trying to reach it, he accidentally bumps into a hidden closet. He grabs a ladder from it and uses it to open the cabinet. Moments later, Adam obtains a vintage radio that appears to be from the 50s and proceeds to tinker with it. The following day, Goria and Adam witness an attack which causes their colleagues to flee in panic. When they're alone, the pair use this opportunity to make love. After their intimate moment, Goria suggests they can continue their friends with benefits arrangement. Moreover,
Moreover, she clarifies that Adam isn't the man who can give her a sense of security, hence she won't pursue him romantically. Upon returning to the apartment complex, Adam hears the radio playing in his room, realizing there is an intruder. Adam quickly grabs a weapon and proceeds to sneak inside. He confronts the intruder, who happens to be his neighbor, Ursula Stefanka. She questions his presence, making it appear that Adam is the trespasser. When she realizes she's wrong, Ursula leaves with her dog, which is a robot vacuum cleaner. Now alone in his room, Adam listens to the radio and follows the meditation exercises it instructs. Because of that, a symbol similar to the card the boat driver has given him appears, and Adam enters a dreamlike state. In this dream, Adam sees two men and a woman who resembles Goria, but it abruptly ends. The next day, Adam goes to work carrying a parcel and seeks Goria. He informs her that she was in his dream last night, but the woman thinks he's being romantic. Mischievously, she presses him for more information about his dream, but he just reveals two men are present aside from her. Goria takes offense to this, so she curses at him and walks out. Afterward, Adam visits Bernard's room and unwraps the parcel. It turns out the radio is vintage, and Bernard takes an interest in it. From Bernard's perspective, the radio is a cat, making him tear up. Adam becomes uncomfortable with his actions, so he immediately takes over and shows him how it operates. However, the radio fails to play, disappointing Adam. Bernard thinks he is hallucinating since their city has increased the fluoride level in their water. Still, Adam insists it works, angering Bernard. He shouts at him and orders him to leave with his radio. Threatened by Bernard's outburst, Adam quickly gathers his things, but his friend stops him. Bernard tells him he wants to bid the radio farewell. Later that day, Adam returns to his apartment and turns on the radio. As he listens intently, he begins to enter another dream, but he is interrupted when Ursula drops his radio. For this reason, Adam returns to his work and seeks Bernard's help to fix something for him. At first, Bernard refuses because he's busy solving his Rubik's Cube. Adam persistently begs for his help, so he eventually agrees. Since Bernard remains focused on his activity, Adam walks out and comes across Goria. He follows her and tells her he has something important to show her. Again, Goria's promiscuity prevails, and she concludes that Adam wants to show his junk to her. Unfazed, Adam assumes she likes him, but Goria quickly denies it implying he shouldn't get ahead of himself as he doesn't have much competition for her affection. Despite her sharp words, Goria tries to kiss Adam, but Bernard suddenly appears with his completed Rubik's Cube. Adam instructs him to gather their tools and promises to be with him briefly. Before leaving, Bernard advises him to watch out for germs and viruses. Once Bernard's away, Adam asks Goria if she'll come with him, and she confirms, quickly thinking of being intimate with him. Shortly after, Bernard and Adam arrive at the ground floor, but Bernard abruptly expresses his hesitation in continuing. Adam tries to convince him, but Bernard is extremely frightened that his legs give out. Concerned, Adam assures him everything is gonna be fine. Instead of acknowledging his words, Bernard informs him about a nearby internet place and tells him to visit it. When Adam arrives at the internet place, he immediately uses it to learn about the radio. However, he is unaware that Agent Tragos has detected his activity and recognizes him as a fugitive. The next morning, Adam breaks into several abandoned rooms in his apartment complex and retrieves vintage radios and televisions. Afterward, he tries to fix them, which eventually comes to fruition. Moments later, Adam hears a man's radio recording, instructing the listener on how to enter super consciousness. Adam follows the instructions, and in a flash, he loses consciousness. He gets transported back to 1952 when Poland was under Stalin's regime. Inside a room, Adam hastily packs some machine parts in a box. After that, he rides a bus to the same apartment he'll live in the future. Upon arriving at the entrance, Adam tries to find his identification card, but the militiaman asks what's inside the box. To avoid suspicions, Adam willingly hands the box to him and alibis that his mother sent it to him. Finally, he retrieves his ID and gives it to another militiaman. As the man scans it, his colleague insists Adam to open the box, but since his ID reveals he's a comrade engineer, they let him pass. He enters the apartment complex and recuperates by the stairs. While he takes his time, a girl and her dog appear, and she teases Adam. Playfully, he returns her teasing, causing the girl to retreat. Once he's recuperated, Adam ascends the stairs and knocks on one of the tenant's doors. A man opens it, and Adam hands him the parcel. Before Adam can explore his dream, he wakes in the present as Ursula's robot vacuum awakens him. He's confused as to why he's currently in the abandoned apartment next door. At that moment, Ursula enters and asks him about her dog's whereabouts. A few moments later, Ursula invites Adam to her apartment and shares a tea with him. Adam asks her if she has a radio similar to the one she broke, and Ursula 
Angela confirms. Abruptly, she stands up and grabs a more modern looking radio. However, Adam tells her it's not what he's looking for, but something else. Due to his vague statement, Ursula perceives it as Adam wanting to extort money from her. Adam clarifies it's not his intention, urging Ursula to decline to help him. Meanwhile, Agent Tragos and his assistant ask for Agent Maria Torwiska's permission to pursue the case 1977 about Fugitives 2204. However, Torwiska instructs them to perform closer surveillance on Adam instead. Back in Adam's apartment, he operates the radio and stumbles upon another tape. Along with it, the television plays, and a familiar face appears. Adam grabs a newspaper and realizes the man is Professor Emphazi Stefanski, one of the pioneers of the first experimental TV program. In the video, Stefanski repeatedly recites a triangle with a circle, the same symbol Adam keeps on encountering. This leads Adam to cry uncontrollably. The next day at work, Adam heads to Goria's office, donning a 50s-themed outfit. He invites her to come over later as he wants to share something he's discovered. Again, Goria thinks Adam simply wants to sleep with her and even wishes he would take her on a proper first date. Adam promises to take her on a date, but Goria's persistent promiscuity puts an end to their conversation. As Adam leaves, Goria compliments his look, saying it suits him. That night, Adam indeed takes her on an alfresco date, and he recounts his experience of how he can travel in time using the radio. Suddenly, Goria notices a man that keeps on staring at them. It turns out it's Agent Tragos disguised as a civilian. For Adam, Tragos looks at her since she's beautiful, making her bashful. Immediately, she urges him to continue talking about the radio. Later on, the pair heads to Adam's apartment where Goria checks out his vintage radio and television set. She reminds him that hoarding such technology is prohibited in their country. Regardless, Adam doesn't care about the violation. As Adam plays a tune, Goria expresses her desire to make love, and he grants it. Following their intimacy, Adam professes his love for Goria, but she doesn't return it. Straightforwardly, she believes Adam's not her type since she's looking for someone mature and responsible. Moreover, people think Adam's a freak, and Goria shares the same perception. Deep inside, she wants him, but their difference hinders their budding romance. With tears in her eyes, Goria abruptly tells him she must leave, but Adam asks if she wants to stay the night. She declines, believing it's too intimate. Once Goria leaves, Adam goes to his bathroom and listens to the recording. When transported to the past, Adam initially takes a formless state, wherein he can pass through walls. Upon locating his body, he quickly enters it, leading him to foresee different timelines briefly. These tangled timelines appear to show his journey upon time traveling. His colleagues rejoice with his return, believing Stefanski's experiment will surely receive a Nobel Prize. Interestingly, in this year, Adam's colleague refers to him as Kristoff. Shortly after, Adam recuperates when a girl enters the room, who turns out to be Ursula in the 50s. She tries to interact with Adam, but Stefanski, her father, sends her out of the room since they have important matters to discuss. Now, in their privacy, Adam explains his experience to his colleagues stating that he's dreamt of crossing a river and seeing a dreary apartment. Furthermore, he can see his body from afar and pass through walls. He begins to cry as he slowly gets confused about whether everything is real or merely a dream. Meanwhile, Adam's absence causes concern to Goria, so she inquires about his whereabouts to Bernard. However, Bernard persistently denies any knowledge about him. Because of this, Goria visits Adam's apartment and discovers his unconscious body on the ground. Immediately, Goria takes him to the hospital where the doctor informs her that he's in a coma, but they can't figure out how he has experienced such a fate. For this reason, the doctor tells her that Adam has a 50-50 chance of waking, leading Goria to ask permission to see him. Inside Adam's hospital room, Goria becomes emotional when she sees her lover's state. The doctor quickly orders her to leave and assures that Adam is in good hands. After Goria leaves his room, Agent Tragos and his assistant take their turn in visiting Adam. One day, Goria visits Bernard's room and demands information about what Adam has told him about the radio. Still, Bernard remains firm, not disclosing any information. Goria slowly loses her temper. Hence, she tells him about Adam's current situation. Bernard insists he doesn't know anything and is merely doing his job as a janitor. With his response, Goria tackles his true identity and even teases him about his intimate life. Now uncomfortable, Bernard wishes to end their conversation, but Goria remains persistent. This time, she reveals that she knows their company's secrets, one of which is that Bernard is their first android. Since Bernard can remember everything, she insists he provides the information she needs. 
but he declines because he's promised the company his discreetness. Helpless, Goria can only curse at him. Without a choice, Goria travels to Warsaw's slums, where Adam has landed on his time-traveling experience. Goria meets Adam's previous boat driver, and through him, Goria is able to visit a vintage radio collector store. In there, Goria purchases a radio similar to Adam's. Back in Bernard's room, the android tries to end his life, but he is unable to. As a result, the National Security Bureau agents access his memory core to retrieve footage relating to Adam. After successfully retrieving the footage, the agents power Bernard down. On the other hand, Goria returns to Adam's apartment and tries to operate the vintage radio. However, her efforts are fruitless. Shortly after, she receives a call from Agent Tragos hoping to converse with her. Goria doesn't want to cooperate, so she breaks her smart glasses. Then, she proceeds to take out her chip, enduring the excruciating pain. Moments later, Goria hears Ursula's dog and follows it inside the woman's apartment. While she scans her room, Goria notices Adam's vintage photo on her cabinet and examines it. Just in time, Ursula appears and explains that it's the only photo Adam has. She adds that she's Stefanski's favorite, and she used to have a crush on Adam, piquing Goria's interest. Ursula invites her to have tea, but Goria quickly asks for information about Adam's past. In Ursula's dining room, the woman gives Goria a mallet and explains that her genius father has used the Alpha and Theta waves to escape World War II in Poland. Alongside Stefanski's assistants, they've worked on the Polish television and experimented at night, but in the fall of 1952, Adam experienced his first time traveling, rendering him unconscious. At first, he was able to return, but one day, he simply disappeared. After Ursula's testimony, Goria successfully breaks a wall in Adam's apartment, which hides a room containing Stefanski's time-traveling equipment. Goria rummages through Stefanski's documents and recovers Adam's file. Without hesitation, Goria powers Stefanski's machine and uses it to find Adam. Finally, in the 50s, Goria visits Adam's apartment, which turns out to be Stefanski's previous residence. Goria locates Adam, and the man displays a slight recognition, but the alcohol's influence causes him to be disoriented. As a consequence, Adam's colleagues take him to the bathroom so he can clear his head. Meanwhile, at the present, the National Security Bureau squad has infiltrated Adam's apartment complex. Ursula tries to stop them from reaching Goria, but an agent shoots her to death. Immediately, the squad barges into Adam's room to locate their target. Back in the 50s, Goria approaches Adam and kisses him, hoping his memories will return. Thankfully, it's worked, and Goria begs him to wake up. Adam is confused about what's transpired, but Goria doesn't care. All she wants is for him to return to the present. Suddenly, Henyu barges into the bathroom, breaking their moment. Henyu profusely apologizes, but Adam orders him to fetch Stefanski. A while later, Adam informs Stefanski that his experiment appears to be working. However, their conversation gets interrupted when Goria enters the room to drink some water. When she leaves, Stefanski orders Adam to ask her about the events. Adam enters Stefanski's laboratory and uses his time-traveling equipment, causing him to awaken his body in the hospital. At the same time, the squad locates Goria's unconscious body and awakens her as well. Since Agent Tragos and his assistant guard Adam's body, they immediately capture him. As an aftermath, Goria and Adam are interrogated separately, wherein their previous memories are wiped. For Adam, his memories are successfully removed, whereas Goria has lingering memories of him. Without a choice, Agent Torwiska orders her colleague to re-execute her memory wipe. Now, from being a corporate employee, Goria is assigned to work as a garbage segregator. While she is working, she comes across Adam, who is a current co-worker. Despite losing their memories, there's still an undeniable attraction between them. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.